Cambridge English for the Media by Nick Cheramella and Elizabeth Lee Published by Cambridge University Press This recording is copyright. 1.1 Hello, I'm Simon Young, Express Times. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Please take a seat. <sighs> Thank you for agreeing to talk to me. As I said in my email, we want to do a profile on women in the media for our weekly media supplement. I'm very flattered to be asked. Fire away. OK. Well, I've done my background research, but could you go over your career to date? Sure. Um, after university, I did a postgraduate diploma course in newspaper journalism and then worked as a trainee for a local weekly newspaper based in South Sea. Sorry to interrupt. But how long did the postgraduate course last and where did you do it? Right. Um, it lasted a year and I did it in Cardiff. A great course, but really hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Good preparation for journalism. <laughs> and then? Right. Um, like I said, after the course, I worked as a trainee for the South Sea Times, a local weekly newspaper, for 12 months. Uh -huh. uh, I transferred to another weekly paper, Harverfield Herald, for another 12 months, where I worked as a reporter and then sub-editor. Right. Then I joined the Southern Mail, First as a district news reporter, then the education correspondent, uh, one of the assistant news editors, and finally the deputy news editor. I left the Southern Mail... When... Sorry to butt in again. You had four different positions at the Southern Mail. Yes, that's right. And did you enjoy the positions? Uh, like any job, they had their advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> what exactly were they? Good experience, long hours. Mm -hmm. Then what did you do? Then I left the Southern Mail to work for UK Radio Wales, where I produced a series of news programmes, including the afternoon show. Did you... Did I enjoy that experience? Let's just say by the end, I was glad to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be more specific? No, I'd rather not. OK. So then... Where was I? Oh, yes. After UK Radio Wales, I got my present job as head of the press office for Bristol Council. Ah. A job which I really enjoy because of the variety and hours. And your future plans? Hmm. Will you continue as head of the press office or are you looking for a new position? No, I intend to stay here for quite a while as I'm still enjoying the variety the job offers. The variety, right. So, you've been involved with the media and, more specifically, newspapers for nearly two decades. Mm. 1.2 Have newspapers changed during your career? Oh, yes, especially the content. Why do you say that? Well, newspapers have far less in-depth content now than 20 years ago, with more emphasis on the lighter, celebrity-based stories. Mm, and how would you describe the present newspaper market in the UK? Mm, it's a tough market. Uh, the majority of newspapers are not seeing rises in their circulation anymore, and all have had to diversify and consider how best they might present their news to their readers. Mm -hmm. Large newspaper companies are training their reporters to use camcorders so they can provide footage for websites. Mm -hmm. Online news is the way a lot of the public want to receive information. Then the newsroom is a difficult place to work at the moment. Lots of journalists are losing their jobs because, as I'm sure you know, newspapers don't make money out of editorial, but out of advertising. Mm. This means journalists are seen as quite disposable. So, is the era of print newspapers coming to an end? Mm, the romantic in me says print newspapers will always exist, as they're a unique chronicle of daily life across the globe and a fantastic reference for future generations. Mm -hmm. The pragmatist in me says it's quite an outdated mode of receiving information and one which may not survive the digital age. Who is your media inspiration? Mm. This is a tough question. I think Henry Linton, 
the veteran foreign correspondent for UK radio, is excellent. The best. Finally, do you have any advice for people starting out in the world of journalism? Well, the most important piece of advice I can give them is do make sure... 2.1 1. We've still got Madonna's Ray of Light to play for you and a track from the Beatles. But first, the Foo Fighters. Learn to fly. 2. Let's talk to Jonathan White, our football correspondent. 3. It's six o'clock on Monday the 24th of September. This is The Morning Show with John Gray in London and Samantha Martin in Bournemouth. Hello. I'm here at the Labour Party conference where the Prime Minister will announce new laws to combat gun crime. We'll be speaking to the Prime Minister at ten past eight. And the other news. Vets are checking more animals to see if there are any more cases of mad cow disease. Also, anti-government student protests are planned for the capital today. And, finally, should robots look after the elderly? 4. It's 8 o'clock and you're having breakfast with me, Amanda Green. Coming up, more information about the London Jazz Festival. But now, over to the newsroom. 5. And now it's time for Everyday Women, our daily look at women's issues with Carla Morris. 6. Here's the second movement of Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, performed by the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra and conducted by Heinrich Erhardt. 7. I'm Gemma Wilson and welcome to In Focus, our weekly cultural documentary, this week, Rahim Anwar presents a programme about the poet Auden to mark the centenary of his birth. We're going to explore his life, work and popularity. Hello. Auden became the spokesman of a generation. This afternoon. 8. I'm Mo Ace and this is a free podcast. This week's documentary is all about the music genius that is Dr Dre. 2.2 1 You're listening to Radio Australia. I'm Jill Brennan and welcome to Good Morning Australia. 2 Here's Bach's Concerto for Keyboard in D Major, performed by Colin Carey. 3 It's Tuesday the 19th of January. This is Report, with Bill Knowles and Justine Welsh. Still to come in the next half hour, we'll be interviewing Janie Kirk. Four. That was Coldplay with Viva La Vida. Before that, you heard Rockstar by Nickelback. Five. This week, John Walsh presents a programme about finding work on the internet. 2.3 Good morning all. <clears throat> We've got a lot to do today, so let's get straight down to business. <clears throat> Can we look at the first half hour section of the program? Uh, Peter, I want you to work on the item about rising house prices. Mm -hmm. You'll need to find some good examples to illustrate this. Also, I'd like an interview with an estate agent and a package with a first-time house buyer, explaining how difficult it is to buy their first house. Mm -hmm. uh, for the estate agent, contact Pierce Wright at Home Sellers. Mm -hmm. He's on our database. Mm -hmm. As for first-time house buyers, <laughs> I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding one. <laughs> <laughs> Too right. I'll just ask around the office. Uh, should I also look into the possible increase in mortgages? Only if it adds to the story. Yeah. Madeline. Can you deal with the piece about school closures? Uh -huh. I'd like you to invite a leading educationalist onto the program. Uh, there's a woman at Western University that we've used before, Professor Lyle, I think. Mm -hmm. Also, 
I want you to organise a phone link up with parents involved in a protest group to keep their school open. Do you mean parents plural, or will one parent be enough? Uh, you decide, but remember to keep it snappy. <laughs> I'm going to get in a stringer for the story on the opening of the latest Picasso Museum in France. Mm -hmm. Elsa, you get the story about the recent forest fires and a possible connection with global warming. Mm -hmm. uh, speak to Friends of the Earth, a top meteorologist, and uh, take it from there. Yeah. Two point four. Hello? Hi, Sarah. It's Dawn Henderson from Good Morning Australia. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. And you? Mad busy as always. Yeah, I'm calling you as we need a story for tomorrow's program about the new Picasso Museum in France. Mm -hmm, OK, so what can I do for you? Ah... Uh... I've read that there's some controversy because it's opening in a building which was previously used as a night shelter, you know, where homeless people could sleep. Yes, that's right. OK. So, I want you to write me a short script outlining the issues and find me two people who we can link up with live. Uh, one who represents the museum and one who represents the homeless people. You'll also need to write interview questions and brief them on what we'll ask. Uh, they'll be needed on air between 6 and 7 a.m. Australian time. Can you do it and are you interested? The payment will be the standard fee. Sure. When do you need the story for? Uh, we'll need the script and contact numbers by 4 p.m. our time at the latest. Uh, OK, I'll get on to it right away. I'll email you the script and contact numbers ASAP. Great. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. 2.5 So, let's get the ball rolling. Mm. Who wants to comment first on this morning's show? Jim, perhaps? Uh, well, obviously the studio going down for several seconds and the show being off air was not a great moment. Uh, no. We're still trying to figure out what happened. Do you have any idea what the cause was and how we can avoid it happening again in the future? As I said, it's still a mystery. But my guess is that it was a problem with the electricity current. Uh-huh. As soon as we know the cause, I'll let you know. OK. Elsa? Hmm? What happened to the meteorology expert? I've just spoken to him. He says he was stuck in traffic. <laughs> For the entire program? <laughs> he said that he tried to phone on several occasions, but he couldn't get through. I've no record of him calling me. Personally, I think he forgot to set his alarm clock. Mm. He sounded very sleepy when he answered his home phone. <laughs> well, we'll know not to use him again. On a positive note, I think you'll agree getting an eyewitness account of the rail crash was a real scoop. Uh -huh. I was also very happy with the piece about house prices. And uh, I think the piece on the Picasso Museum was well done. 3.1 In this month's issue, Beat the Heat, Great Summer Fashion, plus Shape Up and Show Off, Get Bikini Ready, Fast. 3.2 1. Make your house clean and green. 2. Get fit and fabulous, the best exercises for brides-to-be. 3. Spanish Special. Tasty tapas recipes and magical Madrid gourmet guide. 4. Fun in the sun. 10 top holiday destinations. 5. Matt Damon's Killer Instinct. Why we prefer Born to Bond. 6. Beijing Rising. 7. What to wear from 19 to 91.
3.3. Starting in a minute. Yes, you did. Okay, as nearly everybody's here, Joanne texted me to say she's going to be late. Let's get down to work. It's April, so we've got to start thinking about July's issue. As usual, I asked you to come up with various proposals. So, who's going to start? Well, I'd like to remind everyone that in July there are the World Championships in Rio. So,、mm. any stories and features linking to that would be good.、Mm. Well, actually, I'd like to propose a piece on Rio fashion designers, as there are lots of young, exciting designers there who I think are going to be really big names in the future.、Right. Mm. It might be expensive, but it would tie in nicely with the World Championships. Also, a lot of celebrities have been seen wearing the latest designs by a couple of the designers I have in mind. I don't know. What about the logistics? That's not a problem. I'll contact the photographer and stylist we used for the shoot we did in Brazil last year.、Mm -hmm. Remember what incredible photos we came out with. Hmm. I think it's a great idea if you can keep within budget.、Mm. Can you check out how much it'll cost and get back to me? Sure thing. I'll do it immediately. Okay, what do you have for the food section, Scott? I'd like to commission a couple of short pieces.、Uh, one on vegetarian food. What? Five hundred words about beans? <laughs>、oh. <laughs> okay, folks, let's get back to the point. <clears throat> right, I think we've got some good ideas.、Yes. Let's、yeah. go over what we've decided so far. Sorry to interrupt, but you're needed urgently. Urgently? Yes. I guess I'd better go then.、Uh, excuse me, all.、Yeah. I'll hand you over to Richard. Richard?、Uh, yeah, no problem.、Uh, Grace is going to do a short roundup of beach destinations in Rio, and Denise is going to do a true story feature about a couple who fell in love on holiday in Rio, lost touch for thirty years. And then found each other again by chance, and we've got vegetarian food、mm -hmm. and Rio fashion designers. Have I covered everything? Yep. Yeah.、Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, then that's about it. I just want to finish by going over deadlines. The twenty-first of April is the deadline for the commissioning of any articles. Copy deadline is the nineteenth of May. Artwork needs to go to the printer by the thirtieth of May. Publication for the July issue is the fourteenth of June. Has everyone got that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all.、Uh, don't forget, we're meeting here on Thursday at ten a.m. for the final decisions on what's in and what's out. Three point four. One. Can you believe it? I'm interviewing Matt Damon tomorrow. I'm so nervous. He's always been one of my favourite actors. Lucky you! Can I come too? Two. I'm never going to have the piece finished for the nineteenth. Don't worry about the deadline. It's been extended. It's the twenty-third, not the nineteenth. Oh, <sighs> that's good news. Three. Do you have time to go for lunch? Not really. But why not? I'll proofread the copy when I get back. Okay, let's go. What do you fancy? Ah,、uh, let's go to the sandwich bar on the corner. Four. What can I do for you? A lot, actually. I'd really like to know when I'm going to be paid. Well, um, yeah.、Uh... Three point five. Well, actually, I'd like to propose a piece on Rio fashion designers, as there are lots of young, exciting designers there who I think are going to be really big names in the future.、Right. It might be expensive, but it would tie in nicely with the World Championships. Also, a lot of celebrities have been seen wearing the latest designs by a couple of the designers I have in mind. I don't know. What about the logistics? That's not a problem. I'll contact the photographer and stylist we used for the shoot we did in Brazil last year.、Mm -hmm. Remember what incredible photos we came out with. Three point six. A. Let's get back to the point. B. 
Let's go over what we've decided. C. I'll hand you over to Richard. D. Have I covered everything? 3.7 1. You're through to the photo shoot agency. We're sorry that nobody is able to take your call at the moment. Please leave a message in your details and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hello, this is Charlotte Smith-Hughes, the fashion editor of Glorious magazine. I'm calling to check that you've received the contract and the brief for the shoot on the 5th of June. Could you please ring me back on 020-7478-274 to confirm that you've received them? Thank you. 2. Hi, this is Steve. I can't speak right now. Leave me a message. Hi, Steve. It's Charlotte. I've sent you the contract and the brief for our upcoming shoot. Give me a ring to confirm that you've received both of them. My work number is 020-7478-274. Speak to you soon. 4.1 Good morning. Let's get started. Uh, you'll find my ideas about last night in the email I sent. Just to say, I thought the package on the Prime Minister was excellent. Mm. And the live footage from Georgia with the Scotland football squad was great. Uh -huh. So well done on that. Yeah. Uh, Donna's producing today. What have you got for us, Donna? Uh, lots of stuff on the wires. Mm. Uh, Reuters is reporting that a terrorist has made a video threatening foreign embassies. The twist is that this guy's an American. Mm. Also, it's First Minister's questions in the Scottish Parliament today. Mm. Uh, our political editor is saying that the opposition will be complaining about the lack of police on the streets again. A flood has killed 330 people in Southeast Asia, so there's serious concern about disease there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should be getting a package from our Asia correspondent who's in Bangladesh at the moment. There's a great story in Birmingham about human trafficking. Right. The police raided a suspected building there as part of a big operation to crack down on people involved in the trade of humans. They've got DV footage that they shot themselves available for us and it's horrific stuff. Mm. The conditions these people have been kept in are absolutely terrible. Mm. It would be great if we could get the story as an exclusive, wouldn't it? Yes, definitely, Neil. I'll look into that. Anyway, uh, those are the main news events. What do you think? Um, the American terrorist video has got to be the top story. Mm. Uh, could we get a package and a live from the Washington Bureau? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. I've already asked for a correspondent. Uh, Andrew, can we get a Scottish angle on the trafficking story? Sure. I could get an interview with a woman I know who was trafficked from Eastern Europe to London but who managed to get away and is now living in Glasgow. Mm. I'll talk to the Serious Crimes Agency as well to find out how big a problem trafficking is in Scotland. I could pack it up using the police footage from Birmingham. Yeah. Hmm. I think it'd be great if we could produce a whole programme on this issue here and abroad by using our own camera crews. Hmm. Hmm. I'll see what we can do about that. It sounds good to me. Right. It would be an excellent start for the next winter series of our current affairs programme, Bird's Eye View. That's a good idea. Mm. In the meantime, we'll put our top reporters, Andrew and Neil, <laughs> onto getting people's views on the trafficking issue. So, uh, going back to our news programme, Donna, what's the running order? Uh, well, for the moment, I'll go with terrorism, trafficking, First Minister's questions in the Scottish Parliament, floods in Bangladesh, OK? Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's meet back here at 2.30. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 4.2 Hello, everybody. Great news. Victoria has just told me that our pitch for the trafficking documentary has been approved. Oh, great. Last time we spoke about this, we were thinking about an hour-long programme with three elements, weren't we? Mm -hmm. I think that's still the best way to go. 
we could talk to trafficked people now living in various EU countries about their experiences. We should also interview the police and find some experts who can talk about how big the problem is across Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think then we'll have to travel to some European countries where these people are trafficked from to find out why it's happening. Yes, I think that's the way to go. I've been talking to Andrew Preston, the social affairs correspondent in the newsroom, who can help us with our primary research. Yeah. He's confirmed he can help us get in touch with several women who've escaped trafficking. Mm -hmm. I've passed the details on to Silvana. Uh, yeah, I spoke to two women and did uh, free interviews with them on the phone. Their stories are really awful, mm. but they don't come across as victims. Mm. They're really strong women. They'll be great interviewees, but we must remember to be sensitive during the interview. Mm. We don't want them to feel uncomfortable with any of the questions. Mm. Good. The primary research all looks very promising, but how have you been getting on with your secondary research? We'd better not forget that. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, I've got lots of footage and interviews that I found in our archives and several stories from the print media. I found a really interesting report by Europol that was given to the European Parliament as well. OK, that sounds good. You'll need to write all that up in a brief for us, but you don't have to go into too much detail, OK? Yeah, no problem. I was thinking about ways of making the story more interesting visually, instead of just having a lot of talking heads. Have you got any ideas yet? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I was thinking of shooting some moody footage of border posts and cars crossing borders. Maybe filming from underneath a blanket, so you get the viewpoint of someone being smuggled through. That kind of thing. Hmm. OK, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, let's meet again tomorrow to see where we are. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. 4.3 one. Penny, have you checked if all our interviewees have signed these forms? We don't want anyone to think they can claim payment later. Don't worry, everybody signed. 2. And are the crew aware how much money they can spend each day while we're away? Yes, I've already briefed them on that. Good. I don't want anyone to go hungry. But last time we filmed on location, some of the crew spent far too much in madly expensive restaurants. I mean, we do have a limit. It's OK. Everyone knows exactly how much they can spend per day. 3. Oh, just one more thing before we go to the airport. We'll never get the PSC or digital MP3 recorder through customs if we can't show the official documents we need. Relax, Donna. All the documents are in order. 4. By the way, the camera operator says he's really pleased with the camera because it takes digi beta tapes. That's exactly what we need for this type of documentary. Mm. We'd better make sure we've got plenty of tape with us. Oh, of course. I've arranged for that. 4.4 4. OK, James, just remind me what we've got so far. Um, I've got the tracking shots of the countryside that we took from the car. I've also got the GVs of the border crossing that you asked for. Uh, nice slow pans across the countryside. Um, nice tilts from the border post up to the blue sky. Pull focus shots from the car wing mirror to the guard post. Uh, the POV stuff from under the blanket in the back seat and the sequences of driving up to the border point and having the passport looked over closely. Mm. Uh, were the border guards OK about being filmed, Stefan? Well, actually, they were a bit nervous about being involved in the filming at first, but I spoke to their officer and showed them our passes from the Interior Ministry. They're happy to help out now. No big problem. <laughs> ah, that's great. How would we manage without you? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I think we should get down to the PTC now. Neil, are you ready? Yes, I've written down what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, where do you want me? Uh, I think it'd be good to have you doing a walkie-talkie from next to the guard post, down parallel to the crossing barrier, towards the camera, sighted just about... Uh, here. What do you think, James? If you have a better idea, please tell us. No, your suggestion is great. I think that'll work really well. We'll need to get the guards to hold the traffic for a bit, though. 
and it might be a bit windy for the personal mic. We might need to put the big windshield on it.、Mm. We'll give it a go and see what the sounds like. Stefan,、mm. could you tell the guards what we want to do, please?、Uh, no problem. I just go speak to them now. Four point five. Hi, Diana. Hi, Donna. You made it back then.、Oh, eventually. What a nightmare. So, how's it going? We're still editing the human trafficking documentary.、Mm. Yesterday, I concentrated on the section where you were on location.、Ah. I started off with some GVs and tracking shots, then moved on to the interviews you did. Are there any interesting ones? There's one interview with a woman who was trafficked that's really powerful.、Mm. I followed your suggestion in your email and intercut it with some sequences you shot at the border.、Yeah. The idea is that it's almost like a reconstruction of someone being trafficked. But I thought it would be good to use a lot of slow mixes so that we get a dreamy feel. What, what do you think? Yeah, I'll have a look. You know, sometimes with sequences like that, it's better to use cuts. <laughs> ah, Neil, you made it. <laughs> Are you feeling better now? I wasn't expecting to see you today. Yes, I'm much better, thanks. So, have you decided what sections of interview you're using? Yes, I think so. Diana, did you say that you'd done some work with the clip spotter yesterday? Yes, and I've got all the time codes here. Any music? Yeah, I've got this track here and some low drones from this royalty-free compilation CD I told you about. Oh, have a listen to it later. It's great working with you, Donna. You're so organised. I bet you've even got a list of the shots you took on location. <laughs> yep, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> oh, listen, Donna. Can I record my voice now? The newsroom want me to cover a story in Liverpool, so I'll need to leave in about two hours to be there on time. We've agreed the script. Uh, we recorded Silvana earlier today,、oh. as we thought you might be too ill. It doesn't matter. We'll record Neil now he's here.、Oh. The booth's all set up for you, Neil. Just head in, and we'll fix an appropriate voice level. So if you just、uh, make your way in there. Five point one. Good afternoon.、Uh, come in and take a seat. Hello. <laughs> I trust you had no problem getting here. No, no problem. So, is this your first screenplay? Actually, no.、Uh, this is my second. My first screenplay made it into the top ten of the Nickel Fellowships in screenwriting competition, and is currently under option with a Hollywood studio.、Ah. Impressive stuff. So,、uh, what have you got for us? Well, I'd like to tell you about my latest piece. Fire away. Okay, so、uh, my film's called On Stage. It's a touching musical comedy, set in the north of England. <laughs> This is a story about a group of men, who, on turning forty, decide to reform their teenage band, but find that teenage values and ideas aren't always the same across generations.、Uh, on guitar, there's Peter, the eternal woman's man. On bass guitar, there's Johnny, the eternal rebel. On drums, there's the family man, Brian. And on vocals, there's recently divorced Gus, who's involved in constant generational disagreements with his seventeen-year-old son, Jake. As these four men try to relive their youth, the different lifestyles and personalities make for lots of poignant comedy situations. Uh huh.、Mm-hmm. But then disaster strikes. Gus is killed in a road accident. Jake, Gus's son, takes his father's place, makes peace with the memory of his father and his father's generation, and the film ends with him leading the group to success in a local talent contest. On stage, get it? On stage, age in capital letters. <laughs> the band on stage and the age, the generational difference.、Hmm. This film is aimed at an audience in the twenty to fifty age group. There are a number of great rock scenes, which are accompanied by a wonderful soundtrack of classic songs from the last three decades. On stage is a feel-good film which combines tears and laughter. I'm confident it will generate lots of critical and box office success. Think Spinal Tap meets The Breakfast Club.、Mm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I think Nick Hornby does Bridget Jones. Well, that all sounds very interesting. But could you explain how the audience is expected to believe that the son will go and play in his father's band? Uh, well, the screenplay actually gives two motives. One, the son needs a distraction and the band provides this. Uh, secondly, the relationship between Gus and Jake, as you can read in the screenplay, is, uh, despite the disagreements and arguments, very strong. Hmm. OK. Do you have any questions for Jamie? Uh, no, I think I've got a clear idea of where this screenplay is going. Oh. If you leave a copy with us, we'll get back to you within a couple of weeks. Right. Thanks. Um, could I ask... 5.2 OK, folks, so now we need to focus on the final preparations. Yes. Now, I've already undertaken a reconnoiter on location, and there are practically no problems with access for teams and equipment. And, most importantly, electricity is available almost everywhere. Ah, yeah. oh, good. My next recce's will be aimed at checking on health and safety in case anything happens while we're on location, and the setting up of facilities like bathrooms and a PR and press office. Mm -hmm. As for the creative side of the production, I'll let our director, Karpal, tell you about that. Well, my main concern at this stage is that whatever locations we select, we need to bear in mind how they will look on film. And we also need to avoid any problems that may slow down shooting. Mm. Rajaswar, mm. as Director of Photography, is there anything you can tell us about this? I've done a couple of recce's at key locations and I'm a little concerned about the lighting for the scenes that will be shot in the caves of Maharashtra and those in certain open air sites such as the jungle. Oh, I see. However, after careful consideration, my camera crew think the problem can be solved with extra lighting rigs in the caves and filters that reduce the amount of light let into the camera. Jolly good. I'm taking it for granted that electricity will be provided by two generators. OK. I'll try to get you the most advanced generators we can. Hmm. How about you, Lata? Do you have any problems with these locations? No, none at all. Actually, sound conditions are excellent. Knowing there will be a screaming scene, when we reconnoitred all the sites, one of the sound crew screamed to check the natural sound effects. Mm -hmm. The echoes sounded for several seconds. <laughs> Actually, the result was so impressive that we all agreed we wouldn't be able to reproduce anything better in the studio. <laughs> in the jungle, too, everything seems to be so perfectly set. The birds singing, the sound of animals, the wind blowing among the tree branches every now and then. Great. Um, Indira, just one more thing. Have you already asked the local authorities for permission to film at the Taj Mahal and the Maharashtra caves? I'd like to start shooting these two scenes as soon as possible. Uh, yes, uh, actually, because we need to shoot in so many different locations, I've decided to contact our usual location agency, Film Factory. Oh. They have lots of experience in location management and production. Mm. They'll contact local authorities and private location owners and can provide us with advice and support if we need, perhaps, wow. you know, Ooh, their expertise. Nice. 6.1 1. www.thescottishbookshop.com 2. Gavin underscore Bennett at thescottishbookshop.com 6.2 So, you were given my name by Julie? Mm -hmm. She tells me that you're keen to get your physical shop onto the web. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I don't know if she also told you that neither of us are particularly web savvy, <laughs> so you'll have to keep your explanation simple. She didn't mention it, but uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> we could start by thinking about what it is you want to achieve with your website. Uh, I assume you want a site that will enable you to sell books online. That's right. Nowadays, a web presence is absolutely necessary especially in the retail industry. Mm. We need to showcase our stock and, at the same time, our shop in Glasgow. Right. Do you have any ideas of what domain name you'd like? A domain uh, what? <laughs> Sorry, what's that? It's the address of your website. It's important to keep it simple. 
Um, we should try to get www.thescottishbookshop.com. Ah. Mm. I've checked with a company which offers web hosting services that I think you should use, and the name is available. Uh, it's my turn to be confused. What exactly are web hosting services? Uh, a web hosting service is a type of service which allows individuals and organizations to set up their own websites. They're companies that provide space on a server. Uh, a server is a kind of computer system which provides specific programs or applications. Uh, okay, so my new virtual shop would be stored on a server mm -hmm. by the web hosting service. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to worry about running my own servers or anything like that. That's right. You'll pay a monthly fee and they'll take care of all the technical infrastructure, which allows you to focus on selling books. <laughs> mm. So uh, let's start thinking about what you would like to include in your new web shop. So, we've decided that on the home page, you want a shopping basket, a customer login, a drop-down menu of book categories and bookshop information, mm -hmm. images of the latest releases, uh, a search function, and possibly a short text about the shop. Mm -hmm. This brings up a few considerations. Firstly, how many images do you want to include? Before broadband, the more images you included, the slower the download time was, but that's no longer a problem. And secondly, who's going to be responsible for maintaining the site? If you include all these features, you'll need someone to do web maintenance, you know, keep the catalog up to date and reply to inquiries. Oh yeah, we'd realised that this was going to be complicated, but fortunately our son Gareth, who is on holiday this week, is much more IT literate than us. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that once he understands the system, he'll be able to take care of these responsibilities. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a real shame that he can't be here for this initial meeting, but he'll be present at future meetings. Julie said you might be able to help us out with the initial maintenance or suggest someone who can. Mm. Sure, that won't be a problem. I'll email you a quote in the next couple of days and if you're happy with my price, we can take it from there. Great. It's been really interesting talking to you. Yeah, I, I look forward to doing business with you and getting our website up and running. Thanks for coming here today. Uh, have a safe journey. Thanks. Bye. 6.3 Hello everyone and welcome to the latest Notes from Spain podcast. Today we're going to be talking about setting up an online business in Spain. Hello. Now, the first thing you're going to need to know is that most of the accountants you come across here aren't used to working with online businesses. Why is that, Marina? In Spain, there is not much, there are not many online businesses apart from the big companies. And also buying on the internet depends on age. Older people, people like my parents, for example, never buy on the internet. Yeah, yeah, whereas my dad, who is 65, is buying a lot on the internet. So, problem number one is that you will probably have to find an accountant who is willing to take on the responsibility of the online side of the... Of the to learn, yeah. Really, that involves two sides. Number one, processing payments. For example, payments for our Spanish site come in by, by PayPal. And we had to work closely with the accountant to work out how we would tell we our PayPal receipts and process them onto paper in a way that he could understand. Mm -hmm. Now, the other problem is that the accountant is going to have to work with you and a lawyer to draw up a privacy policy. Marina, what is this privacy policy and why is it so important? Mm. Well, you need to protect the data you receive from your clients. Okay. And to do so, you have to fill in a file for the Data Protection Agency. Yeah. And in that file, you need to more or less explain what information you collect from your clients and what you use this information for. So, for example, 
On our websites, visitors can leave comments on articles we write, and the simple fact that people write their name, their email address, and their comment on our website, which then gets stored on our servers, means we have to declare this fact in our privacy policy to the Data Protection Agency.、Mm -hmm. I was pretty amazed by the fact that you had to declare people are leaving comments on your website. <laughs> right. So this privacy policy is submitted not only to the Data Protection Agency, but you also need it on your website.、Mm -hmm. That's right. Then there are things like terms and conditions agreements for the store part of a website, which we put both in Spanish, as it is a legal requirement,、mm -hmm. and in English, as most of our customer base is English speaking. Okay, what's next?、Uh, setting up your website. The actual mechanics of it. Six point four. Most of our customer base is English speaking. Okay, what's next?、Um, setting up your website. The actual mechanics of it. Now, our website is actually hosted in the USA by a company we're very happy with. Why are we hosting our website in America and not Spain? Well, the main reason our web host is in the USA is because it's cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> But also because the service you get is better. You get more bandwidth. The customer service is quicker, and, and they tend to have more up-to-date online technologies on their server.、Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to talk about getting your website designed, Marina. We've used Elans for a few things. Elans is an online service where you can find information about the project you want to complete, and people will make you offers from all around the world. Yeah, that's e l a n c e dot com, elans dot com.、Mm -hmm. Very useful. You outline your project, people bid, and there is a great feedback system there from people who have already used the bidders, so you can decide who is going to be best for your project. We actually did all of the web design ourselves using open source software. Most of our sites are based on WordPress, which is a free piece of software, blogging software, that is very easy to customize. Even the store software we use is free.、Mm. Right, I think that's most of the main points covered.、Uh, finally, how about if people want a bit of inspiration? Any books or websites that they might want to look at? There was a book called The Four Hour Week. Which gave us a lot of inspiration and ideas, even if we don't work four hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> the four-hour week is a myth. Who works only four hours a week? <laughs> yeah, and a book. Okay, is... so wait. I think that's at fourhourworkweek.com,、mm -hmm. or you can Google Tim Ferriss, F E R R I S S, to find the book. And a website I really like is copyblogger.com.、Mm. Well, I think that's all for now.、Uh, links to everything as usual over at notesfromspain.com. See you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Seven point one. Good morning, everybody. My name is Marianne Reed, and I'm the managing director of media design advertising here in New York.、Yep. <clears throat> It's great to finally meet face to face after speaking only on the phone.、Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, to begin with, I hope you won't mind me saying something about our history. Our headquarters are in Milan, and this is our main branch outside Italy, with 22 more scattered around the states, Australia, Japan, and of course Europe. We have 2,300 employees altogether. We're a very well-established company with many years of valuable experience. We've worked with many of the top names in the fashion, food, and transport industries. Though we specialize in media products, now over the years we've won numerous awards for our innovative approach to advertising. And just last year, we won three prizes at the annual Advertising Media Awards, both at a national level and internationally. I can honestly say that we've never had a dissatisfied client. <laughs> well, if there are no questions,、uh, I think we might as well get started then.、Uh, 
I'd like to hand you over to our art director, Dave Terry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to start by showing you a few of the campaigns we've produced in the past couple of years, which seem to be in line with what you would like us to do for your newspaper. Okay, so on the walls around this room, you can see some examples of our best print ads. Nice. Uh, for instance, this is a poster for a very popular fashion magazine, well, these here are some shots from an ad for a multimedia company. Mm. And many of these campaigns have won prestigious awards for outstanding design. Oh, really? You'll also notice the TV screens around the room showing some of our best TV ads. Yeah. Uh, sorry the sound's turned down, but I'm sure you can see that we always go for a very powerful visual effect. <laughs> the one showing right now, for instance, was for... Uh, 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 sorry to interrupt, Dave, but I think Cecily Valley, our copywriter, has something to add here. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, could I just say that we always adapt and translate the slogans of each ad to take into account the cultural sensitivities of the countries where the product is being launched. Uh, may I just make a quick point here? Mm. Oh. I'm Raffaella Livingstone, the general account manager. I think it's important to emphasize that in the campaign shown here, sales, according to our sales and marketing analysis, increased dramatically by up to 35% once the campaigns were launched. Mm -hmm. uh, any initial thoughts or comments, Mr. McEwens? Well, there's no doubt your work is of an extremely high quality. <laughs> of course, we were aware of the before working here, and we can see that you definitely lily lit your excellent reputation. Oh. I've been a brand manager for many years, and I think those, those TV ads you've just shown us are really impressive. What do you think of them, Francis? My assistant brand manager, Ms. Lohan, has considerable expertise in this field. Hmm. I must say the gra the graphics are incredibly effective and the slogans are really snappy. I think a print and TV campaign along these lines would certainly meet our objectives at the, at the sunshine. Oh, yeah. Well, now you know who we are and what we can produce. We do hope you'll send us, send us a brief soon so we can prepare our proposal. Uh, how about meeting again in 10 days' time, say, on the 1st of August? Yeah. 7.2. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Media Design Advertising. Thank you. Needless to say, we're delighted to be chosen to handle your campaign. We'll make sure you won't regret it. <laughs> Mr. McEwens, if there's anything you would like to say before we proceed, please go ahead. Well, as we told you in our brief, we intend to launch a brand advertising campaign in six months' time at the very latest. Our market is middle-class newspaper readers in their late 20s to early 40s. Do you think you can provide us with a complete campaign by then? Well, it all depends on what kind of campaign you have in mind. Just print, or a full-range launch involving print, TV, radio, and billboards? Considering the budget at our disposal, which is somewhere between eight hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars and $900,000, we're prepared to spend a third of the money on a print campaign and the rest on a prime-time TV slot. Well, it seems there's no time for delay then. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, we're used to working at even shorter notice. Well, how long would it take you to produce the campaign? Well, I think that we'll be able to do it in three to four months. Yeah. Is that right, Rafaela? Mm, realistically, I'd say four months, uh -huh. but it all depends on the production team. It's summer, and a lot of people are away on holiday. Mm. Uh, don't, don't worry, Mr. McEwens. We won't take longer than necessary. And let me add that we traditionally don't work with more than one client in any given sector, so you're guaranteed our full attention. Well, that sounds both promising and professional. And what about commission? If I may, we always tell our clients that what matters is not our price, but the selling power of your adverts. Mm -hmm. In any case, if it's okay with you, I'll send an email tomorrow giving you a quote and drawing together all the details of the contract, including the deadline when the campaign will be ready. And I can assure you, Mr. McEwens, we'll provide you with work of an extremely high standard, 
and make sure you get an unforgettable campaign. Also, very importantly, you'll have the opportunity to get your adverts trialed with test audiences before you pay us. That way, there's no risk of you being dissatisfied with the finished product. Great. In that case, you won't mind if I request that my assistant, Francis, talks to your art director in more depth about a few of our own ideas for the campaign. That's no problem at all. Uh, Dave will be here in a minute. Uh, can you please tell Dave Terry to come to the meeting room immediately? Thanks. By the way, Rafaela, will you please arrange a brainstorming meeting for next week? Mm, yes. uh, right. Shall we go through here and mm -hmm. have a look at some okay. more designs for yeah. you? 7.3 How is everyone this morning? Good, I hope. Good. <laughs> so, after a week of deep thought, what have you got? Any thoughts on the media campaign? We've come up with a few ideas, actually. Uh, how about this picture showing all these people sitting on a bus and reading the newspaper? Good idea, but I've got a feeling it's been done before, hasn't it? Mm. But let's keep an open mind. I'll write it up on the board. <laughs> uh, all ideas are good ideas. What about you, Cecily? What have you come up with in the copywriting department? Well, I've written down a few catchy slogans, but there's the one that I like the most. The Daily Sunshine. Nobody lies in the sunshine. Mm. <laughs> Isn't truth the main idea Mr. McEwens wants to convey to his readers, together with the idea of free speech? Mm. Yes, th that's really clever. Uh, of course, we should think of something symbolizing freedom of speech, too. I, I tell you what, when you mentioned lying in the sun, you reminded me of my trip to Madagascar a few years ago. I was struck by the way the people gathered around baobab trees to discuss all sorts of issues. I remember its branches shooting out all over the place. I think that would make a great combination, where these branches would stand for the possibility of expressing opinions freely. Oh, yeah. well, it seems like a good idea, apart from the fact that not everybody knows about Madagascar or baobab trees. Mm. Yes, that's true, but... As you know, advertising doesn't necessarily have to convey a direct message, as long as it arouses people's curiosity. Yeah. Anyway, I've heard about other African countries where baobab trees serve as a meeting place for many villages to discuss community matters, mm -hmm. relate the news of the day, or tell stories. I think we should go for it. Oh. Well, uh, if everyone agrees, let's pursue this idea. <laughs> uh, how about you? Raffaella, you're very quiet this morning. What's the matter? I guess you're thinking about the budget, aren't you? <laughs> Actually, yes. I just don't agree with the approach of talking about the ads first and then the budget. But apart from that... Oh, yes. That's a fair point. Uh, what would you say, Dave or Cecily? Well, why don't we limit the time of the TV campaign to 30 seconds only? Here's an idea. Imagine some baobab trees in the foreground of the African savanna with the sun rising in the background. And when the sun is up in the sky, it turns into the cover of the newspaper itself, <gasps> revealing the slogan you said before. Oh. Uh, meanwhile, some classical music could give it that final touch of class. <laughs> Say, for example, a bit from Vorjak's New World Symphony. We'd also need to come up with a voiceover, perhaps something like... Choice of the American People, The Daily Sunshine Voted Paper of the Year 2008, A New Dawn for Journalism, Let the Daily Sunshine Shed Some Light on Your World. Oh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. As long as long and manage to produce an ad like that within the budget we have, I, I, the client will love it. <laughs> I think so too. And so do I. Okay then, since we all agree on this idea, I think we should go for it. But please bear in mind that we need to have a pre-production meeting in a week to finalize what we yes. discussed yes. here yes. and make sure yes. we can well, afford it. 7.4 Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. As most of you know, I'm Marianne Reed, Managing Director of Media Design Advertising here in New York. I'd like to thank you all for coming here today. It's a great pleasure to present this outstanding TV campaign that we've prepared for you, The Tree of News. 
Thank you. We're really looking forward to seeing what you've come up with. Thanks, John. Let's begin by watching the advertisement. Uh, Rafaela, can you... <laughs> oh, we knew that you'd like the advert. What we'd like to do now is go into the thinking behind my ad. By the way, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to interrupt. My colleagues and I will be happy to answer them. Uh, I'm now going to hand you over to our art director, David Terry, to introduce the artistic aspect of this campaign. As you can see for yourselves, the photography is one of the strong points of this particular piece of work. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to draw your attention to this strange beauty of this tree that we've called the Tree of News, a baobab tree. We hope you'll like the photography as much as we do. The atmospheric setting and the rising sun represent both the dawning of a new day as well as the latest news. You'll also notice that the absence of people grabs your attention. Uh, furthermore, we believe that the use of classical music, in this case, Borjak's New World Symphony, underlines the fact that this is a serious newspaper. Yeah, yeah, we hope point. the photography will be appreciated because of the contrast of color and tone, and also because it brings out the points highlighted by the text so brilliantly. But I think my colleague Cecily can go more into that as the copywriter. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as David has just said, we've come up with a fantastic combination of words and images. Something that's simple, easy to read and memorize, and most importantly, very persuasive. Then, to tie in perfectly with the image, we have the slogan, the daily sunshine, nobody lies in the sunshine. <laughs> the play on words manages to convey the message that the daily sunshine is a completely reliable and honest newspaper whose journalists want to present the facts. Very impressive. Everything looks great, very convincing. I do have just one little query, though. Mm -hmm. Why a baobab and why is it called the tree of news. Uh, good question. You see, baobabs are used as a meeting point in some African countries. People from many different villages meet under these trees to discuss community issues and tell the latest daily news or stories. Oh. That is what makes this ad campaign so special. Indeed. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> enough. Otherwise, Dave will be asking for a huge pay raise. <laughs> well, as it seems there are no other questions, I'd suggest we move on to the print campaign, uh -huh. which we have here. If you look Just on your... 8.1. No, but compared with the... Morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Well, then... It seems we're having problems with sparkle. Mm. Basically, sales are falling. Robert, please, what's the latest on this front? Well, as the first graph shows, there's been a dramatic 20% decline in the number of copies sold during financial year 2007-2008, compared with those sold during 2006-2007. Mm. Sales have dropped from 151,056 copies to 120,845. Sorry to interrupt, but how much is that in market share terms? Well, uh, this is shown in the next two graphs. Graph two shows that in the previous year, we had around 35% of the market share with Sparkle, whereas our main competitor, Golden, had just under 50, and Jules, the remaining 15 or so. Uh -huh. mm. In graph three, you can see that in the past 12 months, we lost seven percentage points of our original market share altogether, oh, yeah. while our competitor sales have risen by five percentage points and two percentage points, respectively. Yes. Yeah. Well, eight point two. Do we know what's caused this decline in sales? Hmm. Well, it seems that Sparkle is simply no longer appealing to readers between 25 and 35. We've virtually lost contact with that market segment. Mm. Well, yes. That's Obviously, good. the problem is with the product itself and, mm. to some extent, with promotion. We need to raise brand awareness. This is all pretty bad, isn't it? 
Mm. Well, it's certainly not great news, no, but uh, we can reverse this negative trend if we look carefully at the four P's to see where we can increase demand. Mm. I'm sure that if we can get the marketing mix right, we'll get our customers back. Mm. Thanks, Robert. Now, I saw these figures when the analysis came in last week, and I've been thinking about what we should do. Here's what I've come up with. We need to take immediate action by setting new objectives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also need to take into account the findings from the competitor analysis and the trend report, which were presented to us last week. Mm. Now, I also think we need to redesign our overall communication strategy. Any ideas on how we can do that, Maggie? Um, I suppose the first thing we should do is increase consumer awareness of Sparkle and reinforce its image as one of the most contemporary, prestigious, and exclusive magazines on the market. Yes. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we should investigate new communication tools so we can create marketing material that addresses customers' needs. Mm -hmm. Integrated marketing communications, that's the solution to the problem. Good old IMC. Um, talking about needs, mm -hmm. one extremely important finding that emerged from our marketing analysis is that younger people are strongly attracted to digital magazines. Mm -hmm. You mean yeah. Yeah. online magazines, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Oh. Our problem is that our competitors have invested a lot of time and money in digital magazines and managed to broaden their readership. Mm -hmm. Eight point three. Yes. In fact, it all links up with my idea that Sparkle badly needs restyling. Mm -hmm. I think we could improve results by using more creative and original photos. Mm -hmm. That means hiring the best photographers on the market. Mm -hmm. right. We also need a graphic layout that's more contemporary mm. and functional. Mm. And perhaps even a more appealing font? Absolutely. We should also bring in a fashion consultant. Um, but it would be great if we could also have an advertising campaign, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. But as always, it depends on the budget. In any case, when we know the answer to that, we'll need to come up with a coherent strategy and decide what to do and who's going to do it. Mm. It goes without saying that a key role will be played by the PR and the press office. And this is where both of you, Maggie and Frank, with your teams, can do a lot to get us out of this difficult situation. I hope so. Um, you're suggesting not only a complete restyling, but also the inclusion of new content, aren't you? That's right. Mm. I believe that both of these ingredients will increase our readership and give a big boost to our sales. Mm. We need to relaunch Sparkle as soon as possible. You should start setting up the communication strategy and activity scheduling as soon as you can. Right. Today is February the 7th. Uh, I guess one week will be enough for the communication strategy, won't it? Uh, I'd think so, Frank. Yes, that seems realistic. Mm -hmm. Right then. Mm. I'll get some costs for these objectives we've discussed. I'll email you with that information well before our next meeting. If everything goes according to plan... I would expect the launch to take place in eight months, just in time to catch the September issue. Mm. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. OK, that's it for today then. Oh, Jennifer, please don't forget to email me the minutes of this meeting. I need them on my desk by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning as I have to brief the chief executive officer. 8.4 I'm hoping that mm. we can okay. Hello, that everyone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the atmosphere seems a bit more relaxed this week. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> now, Maggie, before you update us on the activity scheduling and the promotion action plan, mm -hmm. I've got some good news. Another project has been cancelled in order to make more money available for Sparkle. Oh. So, mm. I can now confirm that Sparkle's relaunch will include an advertising campaign. Oh. <laughs> okay. We hope this will involve the endorsement of actresses Claudia Schneider and Nicole Lopez, wow. who will appear both in the press and on TV. In light of that, and the activities run by your department, the great news is that a generous budget of 
million dollars has been set. Wow! That's fantastic mm. news. Of course, you're aware we'll need to create a synergy between the advertising campaign and all the other communication channels we plan to use. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I trust you've managed to produce something as good as you always do. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, it's great that they've approved the advertising campaign. It'll help to maximize visibility in the media. Frank will talk us through the action plan we've put together. Eight point five. Well, if we confirm that the launch is to be held on September fifth, we need to move quickly to organize an outstanding international event on the same date. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Now, the event will be for our biggest advertisers, the managing directors of top jewelry brands, and of course celebrities. We'll have to send the invitations by July in order to make sure that they attend. We'll also need to create a press kit for the event, including a press release, the September cover, and a CD containing the visuals of the advertising campaign. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we've just received news from Claudia Schneider and Nicole Lopez for the celebrity endorsement. It looks likely we'll be able to get both of them. Wow, oh, that's, that's great! great. That's Our idea is to have them photograph while reading Sparkle. As soon as they're a hundred percent confirmed, we'll fix a date for the shoot. Sounds great, but. It's also really important that we get some positive articles written about the relaunch.、Mm -hmm. So,、mm. to start with, I assume you're planning to invite the chief editors of other Canada media magazines to the event,、mm -hmm. along with sponsors and investors.、Yeah. Also, what are our chances of getting some product placement opportunities in the future? Um, I think we could.、Uh, yeah. In the meantime, we need to start generating some excitement about the event.、Mm. Yes, we'll have to send the celebrities a save the date by March.、Mm -hmm. The location, as well as the celebrities attending, will be extremely important if we want to make sure that the top journalists in the luxury field cover the event.、Mm. Concerning the placement of Sparkle in movies, I've already briefed the placement agency. In a few weeks, we should receive some production proposals to evaluate. It would be fantastic if we could get our magazine to appear in a blockbuster movie next fall. Absolutely, that's、mm. yeah. <laughs> what we're great thinking. thinking.、Yeah. Eight point six. It all sounds extremely positive.、Yeah. However, our market analyst Robert Vaughan has told us that another decision was made during the recent meeting at the CEO's office.、Hmm? Management have agreed that if we want to increase our market to include a younger demographic age group, we should really expand our online presence.、Mm -hmm. So, they have set aside a significant amount of money to do this. We're going to have an improved, browsable online version of the magazine.、Excellent. That means we can establish an interactive relationship not only with our readers but also among our readers.、Mm -hmm. This will provide a unique social networking facility and feedback system.、Oh, that's excellent news. We can include an information sheet on that in the press kit. I'm sure our potential younger readers will be very interested to hear about it. Right, people who read the magazine online aren't only interested in the product,、mm -hmm. but are also prepared to interact with the company. This is where our direct competitors are. Oh, sorry, were way <laughs> ahead of us, as shown by their good results. Too true. Yes, the whole thing sounds fantastic. I think we're on the right track. <laughs> Unless anyone has anything else to add, I think that's it. Eight point seven. Hi, Frank. Great news! It seems we're nearly there. Only a few more major deadlines. We'll probably only need to meet a couple more times before we finish. That's good.、Mm -hmm. It's been quite stressful trying to keep working at this rate. <laughs> I think the whole team's really starting to feel it.、Mm. Anyway, here are the last proofs of the material for the press kit.、Okay. We need to get the green light on them ASAP in order to meet the final deadline. I'm sure you're doing an excellent job with the press kit. Thanks. By the way, what do you think of this slogan on the front of the invitation cards for the launch event here in Vancouver? At last, sophisticated women get the magazine they've always deserved. Excellent. And I'd like your opinion on something else、mm -hmm. too. 
After a careful and lengthy selection process, we've received these three photos to choose from for the cover of the September issue of our magazine. Hmm. Let me see. All of them look good, but wow, this one with the woman holding the rose seems to be exactly what we're looking for. An image like this should help us to attract both the younger and more mature market. It also gives the magazine an air of elegance and refinement. I'd go for this one. Okay, good choice. Great job. And have you completed the final arrangements for the launch event yet? Yes. The main advertisers and the top press people have already been contacted and most have confirmed they're coming. As usual, getting the testimonials that we need from the celebrities is more difficult, <laughs> but that's normal, so don't worry. I'll make sure a few celebrities will come anyway, as that'll help get the press to attend as well. Oh, well done to you and all of your team. I'm really impressed with the way you've organized the event. That's brilliant work. Well, the end is in sight. Oh. Um, just one more thing. What's the news from New York about the organization of their local event? Everything's fine. I spoke to a few people from the New York office. 8.8 It was a year ago that we first met to discuss the continuing decrease in Sparkle's readership and four months have passed since the relaunch. The purpose of this meeting is to analyse the success of our relaunch plan and the effect it's having on our sales. Maggie, would you like to start? OK. Our efforts have been very successful in general. Yes. To start with, here are some key figures about the event we organised to relaunch Sparkle. There were 320 attendees, 185 press kits were distributed, and the press coverage was positive in the two weeks following the September issue. There's no mm -hmm. doubt that the restyled version of Sparkle has been a hit. Yeah. Absolutely. The feedback we've received from advertisers so far is very encouraging, mm -hmm. while the advertising revenue from selling space in the magazine has been very good so far. Well, it's clear that we've managed to reverse the trend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, according to the latest report I received this morning from the Marketing Analysis Department, Sparkle's print run has been gradually increasing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Over the past four months, we've seen a 4% gain in copies sold. Oh, this yeah. also means we have regained 1.12 percentage points of the market share we lost, putting us at 29.12%. Fantastic. <laughs> All the more reason to propose a toast to the new improved Sparkle and to continued increasing sales. Here, here. Sparkle. Oh,